So welcome. David asked me about four years ago to write a story for Street Fight that summarized some work I had been doing trying to understand our world better. Uh, one of the things I did out of curiosity a couple of years ago was compile a database that consisted of all of the companies that I could find that were in the SMB world, sold products to SMBs, sold products to resellers to SMBs, and I was very curious to see what does this world look like. So I kept looking at what had already been done. So in 2013, our friends Greg and Abed at Kelsey uh, put together this chart. Kelsey itself introduced their local commerce universe, I believe they called it, uh, three years ago. You're probably familiar with Scott Brinker at Chief Martech. Every year comes out with his list of the marketing technology companies that he finds that are in this universe. Last year's version had over 5,000 logos in it. And so our friends at Luma have also put together multiple charts on different components within the ecosystem. I looked at all of this and thought, boy, this is confusing. Other than showing us a bunch of logos, showing us that there are a lot of companies in this space, it doesn't tell us a whole lot more. And that's where my work started. I thought that there was a lot more we could do to understand our space. So I decided, let me look at the SMB space. And in 2015, I put together this chart, uh, wrote a story about it that appeared in Street Fight, and within hours, I started getting emails from people who read the story. The emails said things like, great effort, a lot of work must have gone into this. A number of people said, you just fell victim to everybody else that's out there. Meaning, you just produced another confusing chart. And it tells us nothing more than there are a lot of companies in the SMB space, and they all look the same because their logos are about the same. So three months later, I came up with an idea to address those concerns. And I produced another version of this chart. And this version got rid of logos and started to list the companies by different sizes. So you could look at who's more dominant in the SMB space and who's not. So a very small startup that just began, maybe has a couple of customers, is in a much smaller space on this chart than Amazon or Google or Yahoo. However, I still was nagged by other questions. Other than showing who was big and who was small, it didn't answer any other questions. And I still had many questions about our space, such as who's growing? Who is leaving and who is entering? How do these companies differ by who's in the US and who's a foreign company? How do these companies differ by who's following them? And what criteria could we use to start to measure this space? I spoke to a number of companies who had criticized the work I did in 2015, saying, I would love to do that. Are you guys willing to give me your proprietary revenue information? And of course, nobody was willing to do that. So I'm a big believer in the wisdom of the crowd. And so what I started to do was go and look at other criteria that was publicly available. And over the last couple of years, I put together another version of this, which David has asked me to show you today. This version is very, very different. This version addresses and defines our industry a little bit differently. So no offense to those of you that are out there that are white label vendors or sell products to those who sell to SMBs. My company, the company that I work for, Camilio, is one of those companies. All of the companies that are white label vendors are not in this version. What I decided to do this time was look at this from the SMB's perspective. If you're an SMB, who could you buy products from? What options face you? What are the different categories that you could buy product from? And who are those vendors? And who is dominant? Who is not? Who is growing? Who is not? 
and what do they look like? So in this version, there are a number of vendors, many of you out there, who are not included in this, and it's only because of the definition of what this chart is. So this was meant to be ground rules, in case you're not a baseball fan. So now I've compiled a database of information that ena enables us to assess what's happening out there. These are the categories that I've grouped companies into. The second column is how many companies I've identified are direct sellers to SMBs in that space. Their price points have to be affordable for an SMB. So enterprise companies like Oracle, Eloqua uh, are not in this. IBM is not in this because they don't target the SMB market at a price that an SMB could afford to pay. We could spend another hour talking about the data that is behind this model, but since I only have five more minutes, I'm going to skip over this. And I'm going to show you what this universe now looks like. So each of these little galaxies I've defined to be one of the spaces an SMB will buy a product in. And the size of these galaxies is determined by the aggregate social media following of the companies that are in that galaxy. And I don't use the term ecosystem anymore because ecosystems refer to situations where companies work with and rely on each other. And for the most part, every one of these companies in each of these galaxies does not work with companies in the other galaxies. With probably the exception of the marketing automation, the CRM, and the email marketing space. Um, so those are very closely related, but the others pretty much act independently. And for the most part, these are do-it-yourself companies you know, you can go up to Zoho for CRM or Insightly or MailChimp and you can buy their product. What this doesn't address is where are the do it with me companies and where do they sit in this galaxy? And the do it with me companies, I believe, are kind of like the asteroid belt. There are thousands and thousands of these companies that sit on the outside and they offer multiple combinations of what's on the inside. And they're very different from those companies. And what you see, if you look at the companies that are listed in green on the outer ring, these are companies whose social media followings have grown significantly over the last year. And there are a couple of companies that you should notice here. Web.com, ThriveHive, and Dex. These are companies that have made acquisitions, significant acquisitions, over the last year or two. And as a result, one would have to conclude if their social media followings are growing significantly, that their business is also growing significantly. And this is the type of monitoring that I've been doing and I plan to do as time goes forward to figure out what's happening in our space. One other thing I've been able to do, which you might find interesting, is since I have a database of all of these companies, I'm also able to go out frequently and harvest what price points are they selling SMBs at. So if you look at the outer ring, you can see probably what you already inherently know. The do-it-with-me companies are charging a heck of a lot more than the companies that are do-it-yourself. But within each of these galaxies, the prices are very different. And so the products are very different. One other thing. If you think that what I've depicted accurately shows you the universe, I will challenge you to look in your microscope out at the galaxy and the universe a little bit more and consider the fact that what is in the inside, what I just showed you, are the horizontal players. Their product fits all industries. But out beyond that are other galaxies that are vertical galaxies. And I've tried to make these sizes relative to how big they are. So if you look at the automotive world, if you look at the real estate world, there are vendors to those industries that are enormous. I also have databases about each of these galaxies as well, but figured it was way too complicated to present today. And one other thing. Earlier on I said 
that what I view this as is a universe made up of galaxies, that doesn't mean that ecosystems don't exist. Ecosystems are strong and are, are thriving within our industry. But this is an ecosystem. And this confusing chart depicts what the email world looks like. So the yellow dots are companies that provide email services. You recognize many of them, Vertical Response, Constant Contact, MailChimp. The blue dots are the other technology companies that have integrated with them. Don't offer email services on their own, but they offer the email services on behalf of these companies, and that is a true ecosystem. So when you look at LumaScapes and you look at other ecosystem charts, keep in mind that if you're only looking at logos, you're not learning a whole lot. So I'm going to be writing stories about this. Uh, I'm going to be posting them up on my website. Uh, and I welcome any comments, questions, criticisms about this. Uh, it's become kind of a cottage hobby for me to try to improve this and make it more relevant. Uh, all comers are welcome. So if you have any ideas how this can be better, I welcome them. Uh, other than that, I think, Joe, are you up next? Or David? Thank you.